the Supreme Court of Canada, Section 24 of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Now we find the following declaration in Article 8. It says, Procedure. The Charter itself contains no procedural directions. This led McIntyre J. in Mills to declare the absence of jurisdictional provisions and directions in the Charter confirms the view that the Charter was not intended to turn the Canadian legal system upside down. What is required is that it be fitted into the existing scheme of Canadian legal procedures. There is no need for special procedures and rules to give it full and adequate effect. The Supreme Court of Canada on Section 24 of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Now when we look at Article 30 of this judgment, it says, The administration of justice. The central concern of Section 24 would appear to be the maintenance of respect and confidence in the administration of justice, as that may be affected by the violation of constitutional rights and freedoms. According to Grant, the term, or when you state, administration of justice in Section 24 concerns maintaining the rule of law and its process, and includes upholding charter rights in the justice system as a whole. So when you use the term administration of justice, what you are actually speaking about is you are speaking about upholding charter rights and freedoms in the justice system. When we look into the Constitution Act of Canada 1982, Article 24 more specifically, it states that anyone whose rights and freedoms have been denied or infringed, according to the Charter, can apply to a court of competent jurisdiction in order to seek remedy. But it doesn't tell us or give us a procedure that we must take in order to have this remedy. Now when we look further into the judgments from the courts, it states that in the Supreme Court of Canada that there is indeed no special procedure that must be used in order to apply to a court for remedy of your personal fundamental rights and freedoms. And it further states that any court can hear you. So we have the Supreme Court of Canada that is stating that there is no special procedure that must be used and that any court in Canada can hear you concerning fundamental rights and freedoms. Now remember that all other courts, the lower courts of Canada, must follow the directions of the Supreme Court of Canada. The Supreme Court of Canada is the final word of the court, as to say. Now, further to this, the Supreme Court of Canada states that the administration of justice, when you use this term, it means upholding fundamental rights and freedoms. So whenever someone walks into a courthouse or walks before a judge and states, I am seeking the administration of justice, what they are saying is that I am seeking that this court will uphold my fundamental rights and freedoms. So the term that is being used is administration of justice. Now, this administration of justice, this seeking of administration of justice, it must be fitted in to the existing court structure because no special procedure. In summary court, it can be fitted in. It must be fitted in. In taxation court, it must be fitted in. So in any court structure that is in operation here in Canada, the administration of justice, when an individual is seeking that right, must be fitted into the court structure. Vital Statistics Enactment Article 34 Watch what it says. Certificates as Evidence Now we're referring to the live registration of birth. And that live registration of birth, it indicates that you are a living being, that you have a heartbeat that is pulsating, and that you are taking breath. This is the only document that indicates that you are a living being in Canada. Now watch what it says here. Every certificate purported to be issued under Section 32 is admissible in evidence in any court in the province as prima facie proof of the facts certified to be recorded. We're looking at another court judgment. It's called R versus Hape. Now notice what the judge says. Since it is a well-established principle of statutory interpretation that legislation will be presumed, notice the word, presumed, 
to conform to international law. In interpreting the scope of application of the Charter, a court should seek to ensure compliance with Canada's binding obligations under international law where the express words are capable of supporting such a construction. Now again, one final general principle bears on the resolution of the legal issues in this appeal. It is a well-established principle of statutory interpretation that legislation will be presumed to conform to international law. A question many individuals have is how do I present myself before the courts as a human being, as a man or a woman? Well, you just saw that the live registration of birth is prima facie proof to the information contained upon that document and is admissible in the court of law. So that document, live registration of birth, it brings forth the fact that the individual holding it is breathing, has a heartbeat, muscle movement, that's what it says upon the form. And those indications are prima facie evidence or prima facie proof which cannot be contested. So there's your way in to say to the court, here I am, a living human being before the court. Now that live registration of birth should be sent with your defense, with your motion to defense, or should be deposited into the court record or presented to the judge on the day that you arrive in court. Here I am, state your name, and I, my lawful name is such and such, and here is my life registration of birth to prove who I am, to prove my designation. Now, by doing so, you're claiming that you're a living human being. You're taking that designation, that position before the court, right there, which is what you need to do. Now, a living human being can claim their fundamental rights and freedoms. An artificial individual, a jurid juridical personality, cannot. Now remember, our fundamental rights and freedoms as living human beings are absolute, inalienable. They're natural rights and freedoms. If you watch my other videos, you'll learn the definition, the terminology of what an absolute right is, what an inalienable right is. Now that you're standing before the court in that capacity, in that designation of human being, these rights that are yours, which can never be removed, are there for you to exercise. So we're standing before the court, and we've come to court now, whether uh, the state party has charged us under summary conviction, maybe you were fishing without a license, maybe you were hunting without a license, maybe you were traveling without a license, there could be numbers of reasons why the state party would invite you or ask you to come to court, but nevertheless, you're standing before the court and you're seeking now the administration of justice. That's what you're doing there now. Or maybe you have decided to go on your own because you've realized that you've been denied your fundamental rights and freedoms and now you want to go before the court to seek an order to safeguard your right or to seek a remedy on behalf of this fact. But you're there before the court seeking the administration of justice. Now you've brought forth your designation through your live registration of birth. And the court must recognize you as a human being. So here I am. I'm a human being before the court, and I've told the court I'm seeking this court's uh, help to uphold my charter rights and freedoms, to uphold my natural rights, to uphold my fundamental rights and freedoms. When I use the term administration of justice, I'm declaring to the court that the state party Canada has stripped me, has removed from me my fundamental rights and freedoms. So the court sits up and says, excuse me? Because what's the position of the court? As we see in R versus Hate, it states that the court's position is that the court presumes that the enactments follow international law. The court's position is that the court believes and presumes that all these enactments and everything that the legislators do here in Canada, all these laws, are following Canada's obligations to the individual, are following Canada's obli obligation concerning fundamental rights and freedoms. So that's the court's position. Now you're in there through your claim or through your defense declaring to the court that this is not the case, court or judge, that actually what's transpiring is that they're denying me my fundamental right and freedom. So when you're saying, I'm seeking the administration of justice, you're saying, hey judge, the state party has denied me, an individual, the right to express or exercise my fundamental right and freedom. And the court says, whoa, what do you mean? 
as far as I'm concerned, the, the, uh, the state party presently conforms or is following international law. So now we're at a standstill. What's the next step? As you saw in my other video, and I'll continue it in this video, uh, the onus or the responsibility now relies on the individual, on me and you, to prove that there's been a restriction of our fundamental right and freedom. That's what we must do next. We went into court, we told the court we're here seeking the administration of justice, asking the court, seeking the power of the court to uphold our fundamental right and freedom individually. We proved to the court that we are indeed a living human being, and as such, we have the right to exercise our inalienable, natural, absolute rights, which can never be removed. So that's been taken care of. That's been qualified. Now, we've learned that the court is standing in the position that's saying, whoa, Canada's following their international obligation. So now we have to prove to the court, no, they're not. They're not following their international obligations, and they're not following their obligations to me as one individual here on this territory. Reference from section 193 and 195 of the Criminal Code. You can find it in Can Lee. It says on page 42 of the judgment, it is important to note that the onus, the responsibility, is on the person bringing the challenge to demonstrate not only the restriction of the right, but also that the state has not abided by the principle of fundamental justice. R versus Haynes, another judgment states the determination whether to enforce constitutionally protected rights under section 24 was never intended to revert to the executive arm of the government. Indeed, as has already been discussed, a primary purpose of the Charter was to place courts, notice that, courts, between the executive and the individual to protect the latter's individual fundamental rights and freedoms. Standing before the courts, seeking the administration of the justice, proven my designation, I know the court's position is one that they presume that all law in Canada conforms to international law, conforms to fundamental rights and freedoms. Now the onus is on me, the responsibility on me, I have to prove a restriction of my fundamental rights and freedoms. Here's a little hint. Uh, we saw that it says that the executive powers are not the ones that we need to appeal to in order to enforce our fundamental rights and freedoms. So, we don't beg them and say, please, let me exercise my rights and freedoms. Hey, you're not doing your duty. You should be letting me do this and that and send them a thousand letters in order that they're going to respond and change the situation. Courts say they won't do that. But in order to demonstrate a restriction of the right, there has to be some communication in between the state party executive powers and yourself saying, listen, I realize that I have fundamental rights and freedoms and up to this point I haven't been expressing them or exercising them and I'm about to start doing so. So I'm just giving you fair warning and if you restrict my right to exercise my fundamental rights and freedoms, well, I will have this document in my possession that proves I forewarned you and I told you ahead of time. Now, it, once you demonstrate to the court that there's been a restriction of your fundamental rights and freedoms, what happens to the court's position? The court's posi position then is it takes on the responsibility to protect the individual's rights and freedoms. I hear this a lot, or I see this a lot, and especially in videos on YouTube, how people are upset with the Canadian court system. A lot of people who are seeking their freedoms are upset with the Canadian court systems and they say they're not respecting me. They're not allowing me to express my fundamental rights and freedoms. They're not listening to me. Perhaps it's the approach that is being taken. Court here in Canada is not a supposed to be arbitrary. It's not a supposed to be operated by the power that is designated arbitrary power. It's not supposed to be a man who controls the court system or controls what happens upon your life. There's jurisprudence. There are set principles of law that are in operation 
that we can call the word of the court. It's the word of the court. And this is what the, uh, the court must follow. The word of the court. This is what the judge must follow. Now, when you go into the court and you've proven the restriction of the right, remember again, the court was in the position that said, ha ha ha, no, 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 they didn't deny you anything. My position is that all laws conform to international law. All laws respect your fundamental rights and freedoms. You're before me. I recognize you as a human being because of your documentation. And you're seeking the administration of justice. You're trying to declare to me that this state party is not abiding by their obligations and they're restricting your rights. Prove it to me, sir. Okay, now you've done that. You've proven it to them. You, you've been able to prove the restriction of your fundamental rights. Now the court must, it must, no, no, no leeway here, it must what? Take on the responsibility now to protect and ensure your individual rights and freedoms. How? Well, when you study the court process and the court procedures here in Canada, you see through terms or designations of order to safeguard your rights. You can ask them to do that. So my right has been removed, Judge. I want you to produce an order that protects my right against the safe part against the state party. So this is the operations of law that we are have to follow and have to go through. Now my next video that I'm going to release here on YouTube is going to show you because it says that we have to prove the restriction of of our right, and we have to prove that the state party has gone against the principles of fundamental justice. By now. If you've watched my videos here on YouTube, you will understand and already know what are the principles of fundamental justice here in Canada. Just to run it down one more time, because this is a very important matter. You're in court. I'm here seeking the administration of justice. Whether I was called here or whether I opened my own federal claim, that's what I'm here for. My designation as human being has been recognized through my prima facie evidence, my live registration of birth. The court's position right now is that law conforms to international obligations, that all law allows me to express my fundamental rights and freedoms. My responsibility is to demonstrate the restriction of my right and freedom, that I tried to exercise it and the state party denied me the right to exercise it, and that this is contrary to the principles of fundamental justice then the court's position will turn and they will defend you as an individual, your fundamental rights and freedoms. If you want to attach this with the video that I just made the other day concerning that common law rights now flow out of the Charter and that prior to the Constitution Act of Canada 1982, an individual like you and I had no real operation of law or mechanism of law to defend ourselves, and public law was the most important matter here in Canada, but now since the advent of the Charter, it's different. We as individuals, our fundamental rights and freedoms are more important than public law, regardless if some like it or not. That's what the law states.